evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 7 o'clock main news. In tonight's headlines, the National Assembly Speaker meets with his Pakistani counterpart to discuss cooperation between the two countries and their parliaments. Japan's Prime Minister condemns a threat by the so-called Islamic State group to kill two Japanese hostages unless a ransom is paid. The Yemeni president and Houthi rebels are negotiating amid a tense ceasefire a day after heavy fighting left at least nine people killed. And the French president affirms that new measures to fight terrorism will be presented by the French government on Wednesday. His Highness Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received at Bayan Palace today. His Highness Sheikh Nasser Al Muhammad Al Ahmed Al Subah. His Highness also received His Excellency the First Lady Premier and Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Ahmed Al Subah. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah sent a cable of condolences to His Excellency President Beji Kaid Al Sebsi of the Republic of Tunisia on the passing away of his brother Mustafa Al Sebsi. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah sent a cable of condolences to His Excellency President Beji Kaid Al Sebsi of the Republic of Tunisia on the passing away of his brother Mustafa Al Sebsi. His Highness Sheikh Jabir Limbarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister, also sent a similar cable of condolences. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received at Bayan Palace this morning. His Highness Sheikh Nasser Al Muhammad Al Ahmed Al Subah. National Assembly Speaker Marzouk Ali Ghanem met today with his Pakistani counterpart Sardar Ayaz Sadiq and his accompanying delegation on the sidelines of the 10th session of the Conference of the Union pa of Parliament Members in the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which started in Istanbul, Turkey today. The two speakers discussed during their meeting a number of subjects of mutual interest, on top of which were Islamic issues, bilateral cooperation and the latest regional and international developments. The two sides praised the existing strong relations between the two countries and their peoples and reasserted their determination to foster cooperation between Kuwait and Pakistan, especially in the parliamentarian area. The meeting was attended by members of the Parliament Caucus accompanying Speaker Al Ghanim to the current conference. Meanwhile, the National Assembly Speaker will preside today over the meeting designed to work out coordination between the Gulf and Arab groups in the conference in his capacity as the Chairman of the Arab Parliamentary Union. Media sources reported a possible mediation deal brokered by the United States to push Palestinians to pull back their complaint to the International Criminal Court of the ICC in return for an Israeli settlement freeze. The United States has argued that Palestine is not a state and therefore not eligible to join the ICC. The U.S. State Department said it strongly disagrees with the International Criminal Court's launching of an inquiry into possible war crimes in the Palestinian territories. More in the report by Fatma Abdel Karim from Ramallah. It appears that the U.S. administration sought to mediate between Palestinians and Israelis again, this time to make them pull back their complaint at the International Criminal Court in return for a settlement freeze which might be temporary. Palestinian officials said the request of settlement freeze is part of the recognition of the Palestinian state and not a prerequisite for negotiations. We didn't receive any uh, formal, let's say, uh, proposals or suggestions, but uh, uh, the settlement activities should uh, stop. This is very important in or if, if, if the Israelis are, uh, let's say, have the goodwill to go into negotiations, but without that, it's impossible to launch any uh, new negotiations with the Israelis. According to media sources, the U.S. deal was presented after the ICC started an initial investigation into possible war crimes committed by Israel. Observers said the deal is highly unlikely to succeed 
in changing the Israeli government's position on settlement activity, especially ahead of general elections scheduled in March. I think this attempt now will be will fail uh, again because the Israelis would refuse uh, uh, that uh, uh, while they are preparing for the elections. Uh, besides that, the Americans cannot uh, uh, play the, the, the role of the mediator between the Israelis and the uh, Palestinians and threat the Palestinians by cutting the uh, aid uh, that is provided by the uh, U.S. to the Palestinians. The Israeli government reportedly rejected the offer a move that was read by officials as an announcement to continue settlement expansion in the West Bank and Jerusalem. The land grab and settlement expansion policy has proven to be the Israeli government's top priority. And now, two months away from elections in Israel, Israeli leaders will most likely put this priority of focus of their electoral campaigns. Fatma Abdel Karim, Kuwait TV, Ramallah, Palestine. As the first confirmed ground battle between Western troops and the so called Islamic State group took place in Iraq, where Canadian special forces have clashed and exchanged fire with the fighters, the IS militants released an online video today purported to show two Japanese captives and threatening to kill them unless it received $200 million in ransom. A black-clad figure with a knife and the Japanese public had 72 hours to pressure their government to stop its support for the U.S.-led coalition waging a military campaign against the group. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who is wrapping up his six-day tour of the Middle East, said that the IS threat against the Japanese captives was unacceptable and an unforgivable terrorist act, demanding their immediate release unharmed. Abe also ordered Japanese officials to do their utmost to try to save the two men, while the Japanese foreign ministry in Tokyo said it was working to confirm the authenticity of the video. In battle, President Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi and rival Houthi rebels were holding talks today amid a tense ceasefire a day after heavy street fighting engulfed the Yemeni capital Sana'a, killing at least nine people. On Monday, the Houthis seized control of state media in Sana'a and clashed with Yemeni soldiers near the presidential palace in the biggest challenge to the government since September when they swept in from the Houthi northern stronghold and seized the capital. Both Houthis and Hadi's forces blamed each other for the outbreak of violence that ended with a tentative ceasefire. Meanwhile, military officials said that suspected Al-Qaeda militants tried to assassinate a top army commander earlier in the day in the southern Hadramaut province, killing five of his guards in the attack. The militants set off explosives, hurling them at the commander's convoy, then opened gunfire, but the commander managed to escape unharmed. French President François Hollande said that new measures to fight terrorism will be presented tomorrow by the French government. Speaking in Paris today, Hollande said that the aim of the measures was to control the travels of the so-called jihadists, to reinforce the intelligence system, to prevent the propagation of radicalism in prison, and to better monitor and prevent the activities of the radical movements on the Internet. The tightening of security measures comes in the wake of the militant attacks earlier this month, which killed 17 people, including at the newspaper Charlie Hebdo and a kosher grocery store. About 200 police officers in Germany today raided 13 homes across the country. A police spokesman said the residences searched belonged to alleged associates of two suspects who, were already, who earlier were arrested in Berlin. Last week's raids were part of a month-long investigation into a small group of Turkish extremists based in Berlin. Authorities said there was no evidence the terrorist group was planning attacks inside Germany, but it had procured funding to help send fighters to Syria, as well as military material. The raids come amid heightened security in Europe following the recent deadly attacks in Paris, as well as a series of police raids in Belgium, in which police had foiled a major terrorist attack. Police across Australia are now on high alert to potential militant attacks against their members, although there's no specific threat. In a statement, the Australian Federal Police said it made the decision to do so after an intelligence review. Police commissioners in states and territories soon briefed their officers about the move, but stressed there was no specific threat that, it had, uh, that had triggered it. The level is now in line with the terrorism th threat level for the general population, which was raised to high last September. Ukraine's military said today that Donetsk airport is still held by Ukrainian forces despite heavy artillery attacks 
from pro-Russian separatists. Fighting between the government the government and pro-Russian separatists intensified in eastern Ukraine a day after the Ukrainian government accused Russia of sending about 800 soldiers across its border. The shelling has left at least three civilians dead in the city of Donetsk, while local authorities loyal to Kiev said the rebels had targeted residential areas under Kiev's control, but reported no deaths. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani presented his nominees for cabinet to the country's parliament for confirmation today, almost four months after he took office amid mounting public impatience over the delays in forming a government. The candidates, including three women, were presented to the Assembly's lower house as Ghani's original list was hit by controversy, with one nominee allegedly being sought by Interpol to answer tax evasion charges. However, Ghani said he did his best to put together a cabinet acceptable to the lawmakers, who have the authority to accept or reject any or all of the nominees. The lawmakers are expected to give their approval on the cabinet later this week. As part of the 21st Grain Cultural Festival, the National Library of Kuwait hosted a lecture entitled The Impact of the Arabic Literature on the European Culture. The lecture was given by Mohanna Lemhanna, a researcher in Arabic literature and history and who has written many books on the subjects. More on the following report by Hiba Abdurrahman. The National Council for Culture on Cell Letters organized a lecture entitled The Impact of Arabic Literature on the European Culture for the researcher in literature and history Mohanna Lemhanna at the National Library of Kuwait as part of the cultural events of the 21st Green Cultural Festival. The researcher in his lecture tackled the influence of the literature and literary creations in the Arab arts novels, poetry and stories on the European culture, especially in the northern Spain and southern France, that has been affected by the Arab literature after the Muslim rule of Andalusia. Al-Mahanna said that the most important changes in the European literature is the poetic renaissance, where the traveling poets brought a significant poetry leap in the literature since they replaced topics related to religion, church, written in Latin, to a romantic notice deals with love, beauty and heroism with the slang language. He pointed out to the high position of Arabic literature and genius Arab intellectuals, poets and writers compared to their European counterparts who depicted them and energized them from the intellectual output, imitating the schools of Arab literary and reviewing the beginnings of European intellectual renaissance, which represented an echo of the Arabic and Islamic literature. He added that books such as Thousand Nights and a Night and many others are works from the most famous Arabic literature that had huge influence on European and world literature. Today's seminar focusing on the impact of the Arabic literature on the European arts is considered a very simple attempt from the Arabic writers to give the credit back to our culture as the first and original source of all other kinds of arts and literature. From the National Library of Kuwait, I am Hiba Abdurrahman reporting for the week in 30 minutes. And moving to local financial news, the main price indices of the Kuwait Stock Exchange ended today's session with a mixed performance as the price index gained 22 points to reach 6,645 points. The KSX15 index, however, lost almost 6 points and settled at the level of 1,067 points. The share of the Aldar National Real Estate Company was the top gainer of the day, while that of the Flex Resource and Real Estate Company suffered the biggest loss. The Kuwait Golf Committee organized the annual Gold Cup competition in its 12th edition at the Sahara Golf Resort between Kuwait's national team and the expats international team. The president of Kuwait Golf Committee, Mazen Ansari, announced that the friendly yet challenging competition aims to bring golfers from various nationalities together with their Kuwaiti counterparts in order to gain more experience in a friendly atmosphere. Although the expats international team won this 12th round, Kuwait national team has a record of seven victories out of the total between the two rivals. Here is more on the event in this report by Salem El Kindri. In a friendly yet challenging cup competition between the two rivals, Sahara Golf Resort witnessed the annual golf challenge between the Kuwaiti national team and the expats international one. This is the 12th Friendship Cup. Uh, we've had 12 uh, very successful seasons of this cup. Uh, this is a uh, competitive tournament. It's called Friendly, but it's very competitive. It's between the Kuwait national team and a, uh, a team made up of expats. Uh, 
uh, internationals who are living in Kuwait, working in Kuwait, and uh, who play golf uh, here at uh, the Sahara Club. Um, as I said, this is the 12th edition. Um, I'm happy to say that we've won seven out of the 12. The expats have won four. Uh, yesterday was round one and two. We didn't too, uh, do too well. We are now behind eight and a half points to three and a half. But today it seems like the Kuwait uh, national team has awa awoken and hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, if, if we win, it'll be amazing because we, we have to uh, kind of uh, get back the five points we lost yesterday. But let's see. I mean, uh, it seems like uh, many of the teams are playing very well. I know we've already won three points and we're working on the, on the rest. Uh, today's match is uh, 12 points total, 12 singles match play matches. And we've had a very enjoyable two days of golf here against the Kuwaiti national team. I played in the very first uh, Friendship Cup back in, uh, I think, 2005, 2006. And it's always been very enjoyable and very competitive. Well, this is an excellent event between the Kuwaitis and the expatriates here at the club. We've got many nationalities uh, of expatriates playing against the Kuwaitis. It's been really good for uh, friendship and just camaraderie of these last two days. Twelve players from each side competed over the cup in three format rounds, alternate shots, best ball and single match play. This year cup ended with the international expat team winning in a close results, gaining 13.5 points to 10.5 for the Kuwaiti counterpart. This is the 12th annual cup that is organized by Kuwait Golf Committee between the Kuwait international team and the expat international team. It has been a wonderful two days championship cup and it has been so close and a big challenge. From Al Sahara Club, this is Salm Kendiri reporting for the English News. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. And to recap tonight's news, hear the headlines once again. The National Assembly Speaker meets with his Pakistani counterpart to discuss cooperation between the two countries and their parliaments. Japan's Prime Minister condemns a threat by the so-called Islamic State group to kill two Japanese hostages unless a ransom is paid. The Yemeni President Houthi rebels are negotiating amid a tense ceasefire, a day after heavy fighting left at least nine people killed. And the French President affirms that new measures to fight terrorism will be presented by the French government on Wednesday. Thank you for joining us.